Hey guys, what's up? Uh, my name is Jason and I want to talk to you guys today about some Overland gear that I personally use that is budget friendly and I think is actually very good. I'm going to go ahead and split it up between the camping and the off-roading section so that you guys can kind of scan through and easily find that. Uh, I've got a bunch of different things and I don't always use the budget option, but when I do, I like to take a lot of time and do research on it. And I want to go ahead and pass that information on to you guys. All right, so the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is this three panel light by Coleman. I would actually recommend the two panel light, which is I believe 20 something. And you're going to say, this is really expensive. What are you talking about? Why was this budget? But it actually has multiple functions. So these come off, they can be hung or they're also magnetic. So you can stick them on your rig and then you have scene lighting for while you're camping. It also has this other function here where you can plug in your phone and charge it. So basically this is getting you a regular lantern that you can carry and just press these lights or you can get scene lighting and you can also charge your phone. If those are functions that you don't need, you can also easily get these little Amazon um, inflatable lights. I know a lot of people that have used these, they're really great. They just, you can set them in your dash while you're off-roading and then they'll be charged up by the sun during the day. Those are about 19 bucks. Those are a really great option. And then the last one I wanna to talk to you guys about is this uh, Cascade light right here. These are 13 for three of these. They have multiple different lights and you can hang these. Um, yeah, they're really great. Basically, those are three really good options for you guys. Um, you know, for different budgets, you've got this one. Like I said, go for the two panel. That's about 28 bucks. If you want to have the charging and all that capabilities, you've got your solar lights and you've also got these. So I do personally have a hard shell rooftop tent and I would say that is probably the opposite end of the spectrum of budget. But before I went out and bought that, I did have ground tents and I've been using ground tents for years and I've also been using hammocks. I think some great brands that I have used that are I would consider on the budget end of things would be the Ozark Trail, which is a Walmart brand and also a Coleman. These are two things that I think that I personally use that I can recommend to you guys, and I will link some of those below. Another great option that I do use a lot is the hammock. I've had this Eno hammock since about 2009 or 10, and honestly, it's still safe for some stains here and there from dirt, all that stuff. It's holding up really well. Another one, if you don't want to go with the Eno brand, which is maybe about $30, $40, you can even go with something like this, which is like a Walmart brand, something like that, maybe $10, $15, $20. And if it's warm weather, like summer, this is a really good option because it, it will keep you warmer, but not so hot that you're you know, sweating in the middle of the night. But I think that those are some really good options. You don't have to go for the hard shell. You don't have to go for the rooftop tent. I know a lot of people use those. They're really great. I like them, but you don't have to do that to overland. I will link below some of the tents that I've personally used and I, I can recommend to you guys and you guys should go ahead and check those out. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is bags. I have a lot of bags. I've used them over the years. I think some great options for, again, I'm going to recommend a Coleman again. That's going to be great. And there's also this company called Red Camp, I believe. And they are on Amazon. They've got three different temperature ratings. And a thing that you want to look for if you're looking for warmth is going to be a flannel bag. But the downside to that is that flannel really attracts a lot of dirt and dust. So just understand that before you buy that, but it will keep you warm and it's gonna keep you really budget friendly. And those are gonna be great for summer, fall, spring camping, 
But I have another one I want to recommend to you guys that is a winter camping option that's budget friendly and it's going to keep you really warm. So for winter camping, this is my hilariously oversized sleeping bag. This is a Browning, uh, the gun manufacturer, their negative 30 sleeping bag. This thing will run you under $150, which may sound like a lot for a sleeping bag. But when you compare it to some of its other competitors, they can run up to $1,000 for something like that. But one of the reasons why it is so much cheaper is because it is made of synthetic and not down and it is also just not packable this thing is just absolutely huge absolutely massive and if you don't have a lot of space in your car this is not the way to go i can 100 percent recommend this one it is going to keep you alive down to negative 30. i haven't been much below zero in this one but i can recommend this one for sure All right, so another thing that you've got to think about while you're camping is how you're going to cook food. So I would recommend something like this if you're looking for a budget option. This is the Sterno. It is a butane stove. So I used to use this a lot, but I will say that I do winter camp a lot and butane does not necessarily hold up as well as something like propane does, which is what I have switched to. So this will be something that you can use and it packs down in this little case. I won't say that the case is necessarily super high quality, but I use it a lot and I've not broken it. It will cook food at a reasonable rate, but it's not going to be super fast like your home stove. Another one I do use a lot is an old 1980s Coleman gas grill. You use a pump to pump it up. You can find those really at, you know, a Goodwill or maybe a yard sale, but if you want something that you can buy like at any store or whatever, I believe that this Sterno is you're gonna be your best option. Speaking of the difference between the butane and the propane, I have switched to propane for all of my heating gear. The reason that I have switched is because if you live in a state where there are wildfires, sometimes in the summer, you will have a fire ban. We found that we still really like to have a fire pit. If you live in an area where there is wildfires and there is a fire ban, most of the time, you will still be permitted to have a gas fire because you can just turn it off. These little propane things are about five, six bucks every single time and they really don't last that long. What we found that we like to do is we'll go buy a full size propane tank and then we use this little adapter right here. You just screw this on and you can fill these little guys with the big one, saving you tons and tons of money. Just hang on to these and you can fill them up and they work really great for cooking, for fire pits and also for buddy heaters if you want to keep yourself warm. All right, so another camping item that I would recommend is this Coleman foldable table. It packs down into this little bag right here. And it is a great option for cooking, anything like that. It is about 30 bucks compared to this REI one, which is, as you can see, is much more used than mine. But this is 75 bucks. This is about $30 right here. Honestly, as you can tell, it looks pretty much identical except for a few things. I use this one personally and I have been really impressed with this table. All right, so now switching gears over to the off-roading side, I wanna go ahead and talk to you guys about lights. So right now I am running a these same pods right here, these Nylite pods, and I'm using them for ditch lights. He's got a few of these around here, and also he's using them for ditch lights. These are about $12 on Amazon, and that's just compared to like a Baja design or something like that, which can run you two, three hundred dollars. These are crazy cheap. They put off a lot of light, about 1200 lumens per. And honestly, I would say they hold up pretty good. 
I have had a little bit of oxidation on one of mine, but I've contacted the company and they're gonna go do a swap on that one. So they have a two year warranty on them. Honestly, when you wanna talk about budget, off-roading, overland stuff, this is one of the craziest little gems that a lot of people don't know about. So these can be mounted in really any other way that a light is mounted. He's got a few on here. These are mounted in the traps up here. And then I have these same ones like this, which are $12 on Amazon. I will link those below. And they just clamp in there on metal parts and they work really great. So these are gonna be really great options. And honestly, they are only about $12 for two lights. And these down here are gonna be $12 each for about two clamps. So you could run ditch lights, you could run lights like this back here for about $24 overall. And it comes with a two year warranty on the lights. And honestly, they're really great. They put out a lot of light and I've been really happy with mine. So another thing that you might wanna consider when off-roading is communication without cell service. You can go with something like this, which is a regular radio, or you can go with a ham radio. My go-to radio are these Midlands right here. These come in a couple different options and they range anywhere from $30 to several hundred, but I think these were about 60 bucks. I'll link these below. These are my favorite radios that we have. Another option is the Baofeng. These are about $19 and they really do anything you need. These are not gonna have as much range as this one, which has about 36 miles. So another radio you could look into is also a Baofeng, and this is a ham radio. The downside to this one is that you're gonna have to be licensed to run a ham, but you have a lot more things that you can use these for. You have tons of channels, you've got stuff you can listen into like the weather, forest service alerts, anything like that. And I'm not actually sure how it works, I've never used it, but there's a way that you can triangulate location using these. I would recommend that you get a Baofeng. You can get these ones, they're about 20 bucks, or you can get the $75 one, which is what I have, and get an extra whip antenna. They are pretty customizable. So they're really great options if you want to go the ham radio route. I do recommend that you get licensed because it is a pretty hefty fine if you use one of these and you're not licensed. But I believe that this is a great assortment of products that I personally use that I would recommend that you guys check out. These are a little bit more expensive, but I believe that these are the best option for me. You have these that are about $19, but they do the job. But these are the ham option that I think is gonna be the best one all around. So another thing that I consider to be an essential, and this is a budget option, is a set of traction boards. This is an X-Bull traction board, and this will run you under 75 bucks. I use this for several things. One is to get you out of sticky situations when it, it is raining or snowing. It'll really help you, but also you can put this underneath your car if you sleep in the bed or if you sleep on a rooftop tent, you can level out your vehicle like that. This is under $75 compared to one of the biggest brands, the Max Trax, which is above $300. And honestly, it's about the same thing. I've used these for two or three years and I've had really great luck with them. I have not had one crack, but I have had other people had them crack. It's not a very common thing. The only reason that I switched to this one was because it is lockable. I will say the material on this one does feel a lot stronger. Um, but this has held up fine for me and it's really great. I do consider these pretty much essential for off-roading. You can use pieces of your pieces of plastic or something like that to get you out. But honestly, for 75 bucks, this is a great option. And I would go with this one if you're going to get into off-roading. Maybe in the future, if you want to upgrade, this would be a good option. But for budget, for sure, this is hands down the best option. So another thing that I would consider very much essential is a way to air down on the trail. You're gonna put your tire at risk for popping on a rock or really just a 
pretty awful ride with full PSI when you're riding. One thing that I've used a lot of is this Boulder Tools deflator kit. I've been using this a lot, as you can see. I have run this entire thing over and duct taped it back, but it still works. This is a really great option because it does come with a gauge like this. And it also comes with these little guys that you can set to a certain pressure, like 18 PSI. And then every time you screw these on, they will go right back to 18 PSI. Another thing that you can do though, is just go buy one of these and it will tell you your PSI. And really you can just use a stick or a rock and just deflate your tires like that. This is gonna cost you about 99 cents to about five bucks. This one is gonna run you anywhere between 20 to 50 bucks, depending on the brand you go with. But I very much recommend these. There's also Ston deflators, which are a little bit more expensive, but I think that this is a really great option. So in line with the deflating and inflating, once you've deflated, you're gonna have to go ahead and inflate your tires. I think I found the best budget option for a compressor, and we're gonna have to go up front to talk about that because I have mounted mine inside the engine bay. The Smittybilt 2781. This is the larger Smittybilt compressor. And I've done some slight modifications on here, like mounting it in here and adding this for a quick disconnect. This does not come with the ability to put it in here, but if you guys wanna know how to do that, I might do a video. Let me know below if you wanna see that video. But I've used a C4 battery tray to get it in here. Normally it comes in like a little bag and you can just use it as a regular compressor, set it in, hook it up to your battery and you should be good to go. So this is a great option because it's not quite as good as the ARB Twin, which is like $500. Honestly, I've seen some ratings where it's rated a little bit just below the ARB Twin. So the compressor alone is about 160 bucks compared to five, $600 for some other compressors. With some modifications, you can have onboard air for budget, but honestly, just alone, this in a little bag connected to there is a really great option for someone who wants to air up and air down and it doesn't want to sit around for a long time. So another thing that I would consider an essential off-road product is a winch. I have two options, one that I personally use and one that I've had friends recommend over and over again. The Badlands winch, which is a steel cable, and then I also have this Smitty Built, which is a synthetic line. The steel cable is gonna be a lot cheaper, it is gonna be much heavier, and it's actually just gonna be a lot more to maintain. You can run into rust, stuff like that, but I've had many people recommend over and over again the Badlands Harbor Freight steel winch. What I personally have is the Smitty Built Synthetic. So I really prefer the synthetic over the steel, which is why I went with this one. I have the 10,000 pound and he has the 12,000 pound. This is about $500, which is a lot of money. But when you consider that you can go out wheeling by yourself, you can get stuck in snow. And as long as you have a tree or something that you can attach to out there, you're going to be able to get yourself out almost every time. A reason that I really like the synthetic is that it is much lighter. I have a really pretty heavy bumper up here, so I wanna kinda of cut down on the weight. I wheel in the snow a lot, and sometimes I get stuck out there, so it's waterproof, and that's really great. And one of my favorite things about this is, sometimes you'll have to run these in through here to wheel it out, but this is a wireless option, so you can be away from your vehicle and winch it like that. That is another reason why I would definitely recommend that if you're looking for a budget winch, this is the way to go. Also, if you want to go steel cable, you can go to the Badlands. I've heard many people use it and they swear by it. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. If you guys have any other recommendations, let us know below. And if you like what I'm doing, consider subscribing. If you like this video and you found it informative, go ahead and hit like below. And I will see you guys in the next video.